Hey there, Evan Rude fans. Um, today I'm going to start reassembly on uh, this 150 horsepower, um, I think it's a 2000 model, 150 horsepower, 60 degree V6 uh, Evan Rude engine. Um, and uh, what I've done is I've, I've sent my block off to get, uh, to get it machined. Um, my buddy... Um, Found a couple holes that were out of spec, so we had to sleeve it. It, uh, it turned into being one of the one of the one of the more expensive jobs, but you know, in some some sometimes you incur one expense and um, at the same time offset another expense. So um, what happened is uh, uh, you can see written on the block there twenty standard and 20 that's uh two pistons on one side that we was able to bore and over here 20 standard and standard so um i had three sleeves put in and uh and then uh two of them were punched 20 over um got my pistons here i had to buy two new 21 uh for the 20 over and then i've got um one of these is a 20 over for the uh, for the port side or starboard side, whichever it'll be the uh, actually it'll be the port side. Um, one of them's 20 over. I uh, it's in good shape. I'm gonna sandblast these pistons. Um, get all the get all the, the gunk off of them. Uh, once I sandblast them, I'm gonna wash them and dry them. Um, make sure uh, and then inspect them. Make sure they're all perfect. Um, my crankshaft. I had. Uh, I had pulled out of the motor um, before. This crankshaft here has a spot in it, and um, you can see right there the spot on this crankshaft. Um, you can get a kind of a view of it there. Um, that is a no-no. You cannot reuse that. You, I mean, you could send it off to have it uh, have it redone, or, um, or or get a new one. But I just happened to. To have a uh, to have another one here and um, this crankshaft I pulled out of another motor from years ago and it is in good shape and I stuck it away I cleaned it up and when, when I take a crankshaft out and I'm not going to use the rest of the motor I, I clean it up and I and I and I grease the uh, crank pins and journals and everything I've still got to pull apart um, the bearings on this and um, and and clean around that I'm gonna clean up all this I'm gonna clean up inside of the seal ring um, um, pat, um, portions right here where, where the seal ring inserts into that. I'm going to clean up all that really good. I'm going to clean my seal rings up. These are the seal rings. Um, I've got a piece of uh, I got a piece of uh, half inch tempered glass and um, I glue with uh, with spray glue sandpaper, 80 grit sandpaper down on it. And just take these and do like this and that, uh, that cleans up your seal rings. It works really well. Uh, I use this piece of glass uh, for a, for a lot of things for for uh, putting the final mill on a head, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, just carburetor bowls, a lot of stuff. Having a piece of glass like that around your shop really help you uh, when when you're putting stuff together. That way you can uh, you can test for true. I mean, having a good straight edge is very important too, um, but you can test for true just by rubbing something on there. And you'll see which parts of it the sandpaper hit and which parts didn't, and you can get a visual uh, on, on where you're out of spec. Um, okay, let's see. Now once I, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get off camera and I'm going to do all this cleanup work on this crankshaft. Then I'm going to do the cleanup work on my piston and uh, make sure that they're good. And then we're going to um, I'm going to show you how how I put a crankshaft in, how how I do it. Um, and then uh, secure it in, and then from that point, we're gonna we're gonna spin it and start installing. Uh, well, after we put our connecting rods in our pistons, and we're gonna spin it and start installing pistons. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. Um, other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get off camera here, get a bunch of this uh, labor done, and uh, then once we um, once I go to put the crankshaft into position, I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera back on and show you how I go about doing that. Uh, just my own personal way that I found that works best for me. So, um, 
Okay, Evan Reed fans, I'll talk to you very shortly. Okay, howdy, Evan Reed fans. Uh, what I'm going to show you uh, right now is um, is how I assemble uh, a piston and a wrist pin onto a rod. Make that assembly. Um, first thing you do is you, is you get a head count of all your bearings. Um, this particular piston takes, uh, this piston and wrist pin take 28 bearings. So what I do is I just um, put them in stacks of uh, four and make seven stacks of four. That way I'm definitely sure that there's 28 bearings in there. <clears throat> the next thing I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll take my piston and I'll uh, determine the orientation of this piston. This is, a, this is a port side piston and it says exhaust goes over here. So that means your intake's gonna be over here. This is the scalloped portion. Um, see that little uh, portion right there? That always faces the intake. Um, if, you know, that's just something, something to look at if you do a lot of these. Um, just, um, just so you know, you can double check because if just for say this piston got marked wrong which is very uncommon but it, it has happened in the past look for this scallop portion here will go to your intake you notice there's no scallop portion over there um, so when we determined that this is a port side piston and this is the exhaust side so that means that this piston will be facing up in that direction okay so the reason I put a line on that is so that's once I'm sure I put the arrow on it and I know for sure exactly where it's going and then that's the last time I have to worry about that. Okay. Then okay, well see now I'm gonna take my uh take my oiler brush. And I'll oil the insides of the uh, wrist pin hole here. Get those nice and oiled up. Take the wrist pin retaining clip. Turn my phone down. Take the wrist pin retaining clip and insert it in the bottom. And you want the open end of the ring to face you can see the little notch you get there for removing them. You want the open end of the ring to face up this way. So what I do, is I push it down in there. And then and then fold it that way. Now you can see that it's not in the in the ring that it goes. It's not in the uh, in its groove that it fits in yet, but it will be when we're done. Hey, the next thing I do, I take my wrist pin I'll oil it up. And I make a trial run. Make sure that it's going to slide down into there easily. Now, one of the main things is not to make any forced assemblies. This thing will fit down there perfect. And that's it. Now that I, now, I've got, well, I had it in there. Now, okay, we got the wrist pin in there. We know that it's going to go in there. Uh, and, uh, and that the weather conditions are right for it. Sometimes, in the cold or extreme heat, I put my, I heat my piston up, and I put the uh, the wrist pin in the freezer. That shrinks the wrist, the wrist, the shrinks the wrist pin, and makes the piston expand, which helps that hole, uh, helps you uh, get it in that hole. Okay, so for now, I'm going to set this aside. Now we're going to worry about our bearings. I already went through this rod. I cleaned the inside of it. I sanded it down. This rod's in really good shape. And then I oiled it for storage. So I'm going to clean the oil out of there. Now that I got the oil cleaned out of there, there's an orientation on this rod you'll see that there's a hole on the bottom side here. This hole faces up. That way, as lubricant 
travels down through the motor. It'll land in this cupped portion of the rod. It'll travel back out this hole, go through your wrist pin bearing, and then exit this hole right here, and then travel on down the motor, then back out through your uh, check valves and up to the top of the motor, and uh, keep her circulating as it, uh, you know, what does it get burnt off. Okay, we've got our, uh, another way to determine um, connecting rod orientation is you're going to have the two dots on your connecting rod. That way you'll know how to put your cap on. This dot will align to that dot. These dots will always face upward. So some of these connecting rods do not have this hole here and they do not have an orientation. However, I always just make sure that I put my dots up on those, um, on those ones that do not have this um, um, oiling orifice here. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're gonna take some triple guard grease. They, they make bearing grease for this. There's a few different greases you can use, but the triple guard, I like the best. And we're gonna put quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of triple guard in, in this area, in our uh, hole there. And I mean quite a bit, I mean quite a bit. Because this is what's going to hold our bearings in, and we do not want them falling out during installation. Because then you got to start this process all over again. And okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to start. And I I put um, four at a time in. This is my personal way of doing it. Well, first, I'm going to get a little grease on the bottom of this and we've got this washer this is a, a washer and part of your bearing assembly we're going to put that I'm going to put that on there and the grease will hold it into place and at four at a time I'm going to take my cleaned and dried bearings that way they're easy to pick up and stick them in that grease Okay, the last set of four is always going to be hard to get in there because they're not perfectly lined up. So I, I take my little screwdriver and I'll put them into place. You got to pick them up off that uh, little retaining washer there. Okay, and once I got these into place, I'm going to double ensure that they're in place by taking my wrist pin, oil this guy down a bit, and we're going to stick it in the hole here. Okay, now I got one that fell out of place, so I'll pick it up. Spin, little spin, pull her out of there. Now, our uh, our bearings are all perfectly in position. Next, we'll take our top, or I call it the top. It's just going to be the next uh, the next uh, retaining washer, and uh, put a little triple guard on the edges of this. 
lay this perfectly on top of that to where our wrist pin is going to go right through the hole. Next. I've got an old socket and extension I use for this. You can buy a special tool for it, but that is my special tool for it. So, bottom, top, arrow hole. We've got our wrist pin already greased. We're going to get our wrist pin going down into there. Okay. And once we have our wrist pin down into there, I'm going to, I usually do this with the, with a connecting rod in my right hand. So I'm going to try it left-handed just because you guys can't see what I'm doing. So put the connecting rod in there. Ever so gently drop the wrist pin through. Take this tool. You heard that snap? That's my ring down here. My retaining clip, my wrist pin retaining clip, snapping into the groove. Now we verify that the uh, the open space on our ring is 180 degrees from the uh, the notch in here for removal. Okay, and that's right. Next, flip our uh, flip our assembly over. Take this clip, hold it like that. Take your little screwdriver, and that's it. And then you make sure that it's in the uh, that it's in the ring properly. And there you go. That is how you install a piston and a connecting rod and a wrist pin together.